There was a time when Libya was a beacon of prosperity and progress in Africa and the Middle East. Roads were paved with gold, and its cities gleamed with modernity and innovation. This was a nation where education was universally accessible, healthcare was among the best in the world, and the dream of a united, powerful Africa was a tangible vision. This was during the reign of Muammar Gaddafi, a leader whose ambitions for his country knew no bounds and whose policies aimed to transform Libya into a superpower that could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the greatest nations on earth. Before we continue with the video, please like and comment on the video so that it reaches more Africans who want to hear the truth about Africa. Done? Let's continue. But before we go deep into the achievements and how Libya could become a superpower under Gaddafi, let's get to understand the history of Libya's leadership and how Gaddafi came to power. Following World War II, Libya was partitioned between France and the United Kingdom, each administering the regions tied to their colonies in Algeria and Tunisia. The UK backed the establishment of a monarchy, the Sanusi dynasty, which was aligned with Saudi Arabia and endorsed by the UN. King Idris I ruled Libya under this dynasty, keeping the nation in a state of obscurity while promoting British economic and military interests. Despite the discovery of oil reserves in 1959, the Libyan populace did not see significant benefits. Political analyst Thierry Myson notes that under the monarchy, Libya lagged severely in education, healthcare, housing, and social security. Shockingly, the literacy rate was extremely low, with only 250,000 out of 4 million people able to read and write. In 1969, Colonel Muammar al-Gaddafi, along with a group of officers, overthrew the Sanusi dynasty, marking the beginning of genuine independence and the end of foreign dominance in Libya. One of Gaddafi's first actions was to ensure the equitable distribution of wealth and resources among all Libyans. Under the newly established Libyan Arab Republic, Gaddafi placed a significant focus on oil as the nation's primary resource. The success of the 1969 revolution prompted the new government to utilize oil revenues for redistributive measures, fostering a new model of economic and social progress. Analysts highlight that Gaddafi's policies of economic sovereignty included nationalizing several Western oil companies, such as British Petroleum GBP, and creating the National Oil Corporation RENOC, which laid the foundation for a more socialist economic framework. Throughout Gaddafi's tenure, the government launched ambitious social programs aimed at improving education, healthcare, housing, infrastructure, and providing subsidies for essential utilities and food items. These initiatives significantly enhanced the living standards of Libyans, transforming the country from one of Africa's poorest nations in 1969 to the continent's leader in the Human Development Index by 2011. By 2010, Libya was ranked as a high development nation in the Middle East and North Africa by the United Nations Development Program, along with several other favorable indicators. This status was reflected in an 88.4% literacy rate, a 74.5-year life expectancy, and considerable strides in gender equality. At the heart of Gaddafi's vision for Libya was the nation's abundant oil wealth. Libya, endowed with one of the largest proven oil reserves in Africa, held the potential to leverage this resource for unprecedented economic growth and development. Recognizing this, Gaddafi took the bold step of nationalizing the oil industry, redirecting profits that had previously flowed to foreign corporations into the national treasury. This move significantly boosted Libya's revenue, providing the financial foundation for Gaddafi's ambitious development plans. With control over the oil sector, Gaddafi embarked on a series of economic reforms aimed at transforming Libya into a modern, self-sufficient state, he prioritized investments in social programs, infrastructure, and economic diversification. The revenues from oil were channeled into various sectors, leading to substantial improvements in education, healthcare, and public infrastructure. These investments were not only intended to elevate the standard of living for Libyans but also to lay the groundwork for Libya's emergence as a regional and global power. Under Gaddafi's rule, Libya experienced significant strides in social and economic developments, which would lead it to becoming a superpower state in Africa and in the whole world. One of the most notable achievements was the dramatic improvement in education. Prior to Gaddafi's regime, education in Libya was limited and largely inaccessible to the broader population. Gaddafi implemented comprehensive educational reforms, making schooling free and accessible to all Libyans. This resulted in a significant increase in literacy rates, positioning Libya as one of the most literate countries in Africa by the early 1980s. The establishment of universities and the provision of scholarships for students to study abroad further contributed to the development of a skilled and educated workforce, essential for the nation's progress. 
We cannot talk about Libya's superpower status without including its powerful military. In 2009, the Libyan army comprised 25,000 volunteers and an additional 25,000 conscripts, totaling 50,000 personnel. The army was organized into 11 border defense and 4 security zones, 1 regime security brigade, 10 tank battalions, 10 mechanized infantry battalions, 18 infantry battalions, 6 commando battalions, 22 artillery battalions, 4 surface-to-surface -surface missile SSM brigades, and 7 air defense artillery battalions. Comes Gaddafi's 32nd Brigade, known as the Comes Brigade, was a primary force for regime protection and was considered by U.S. diplomats in 2009 as the most capable of defending the regime. Additionally, the Revolutionary Guard Corps served as a brigade-sized protection force for Gaddafi. Conscription under Gaddafi was mandatory for 18 months. In 2009, it was revealed that a British Special Air Service team was training Libyan Special Forces. The military was divided into seven regions, the Western Military Region headquartered in Tripoli, the Middle Military Region in Sati, the Eastern Military Region in Tobruk, the Mountain Military Region in Garion, and regions based in Kufra, Benghazi, and the Southern Military Region headquartered in Sava. Despite having a substantial amount of fighting equipment, most of it was purchased from the Soviet Union in the 1970s and 1980s and had become largely obsolete. A high percentage remained in storage, and a significant amount was sold to various African countries. No major equipment purchases had been made recently due to economic decline and military sanctions in the 1990s. These factors, among others, led to a significant decay in the strength of the Libyan armed forces, causing it to lag behind its major neighbors in military capabilities and warfighting capacity. Libya participated in the Arab Detained Force in Lebanon in 1976 as the Lebanese Civil War intensified. In 1979, after the Arab League extended the mandate of the Arab Detained Force, Sudanese, Saudi, and troops left Lebanon, leaving the Libyan troops to fend for themselves. From the late 1970s to around 1987, the armed forces were involved in the Chadian-Libyan conflict, with four major incursions into Chad. The Libyan army suffered significant losses, especially during the Toyota War of 1987, due to poor tactics and Western aid to Chad. All these incursions were eventually repulsed, and Libya no longer occupies the Ayuso Strip or any other part of Chad. The Gold Dinar, a dream currency for Africa that was envisaged by Muammar Gaddafi. It was going to be his greatest achievement in Libya, Africa, and the world at large, however, the project was crushed by Western powers and was not realized in the end. This currency would have been a game changer in the African economy and would have led Libya and Africa to a superpower status. Between the 1950s and 60s, Libya was among the poorest countries in the world. But when Gaddafi came to power in 1969, he made Libya the richest African country with over $150 billion in its foreign reserves with no budget deficit. Libya had the strongest and most valuable currency in Africa. The Libyan dinar was also one of the strongest currencies in the world. Gaddafi proposed the idea behind the Libyan strong currency to the AU and wanted African countries to work to create an African currency backed by gold in order to strengthen the continent's economy and alleviate poverty and dependency on developed countries. Gaddafi's vision extended far beyond the borders of Libya. He was a fervent advocate of Pan-Africanism, believing that the unity and cooperation of African nations were essential for achieving collective prosperity and independence from Western influence. Gaddafi's commitment to this vision was evident in his substantial financial contributions to various African countries, as well as his support for liberation movements across the continent. He proposed the creation of a United States of Africa, a political and economic union that could rival other global superpowers. While this vision was ambitious and faced numerous challenges, it underscored Gaddafi's broader aspirations for regional unity and strength. On the global stage, Gaddafi sought to position Libya as a leading voice in the non-aligned movement. Advocating for a more equitable global order, his outspoken stance against Western imperialism and his support for various revolutionary movements earned him both allies and enemies. Gaddafi's assertive foreign policy enhanced Libya's international standing and influence, albeit at the cost of strained relations with many Western countries. As discussed in the video, if Muammar Gaddafi had continued as the president of Libya, the nation had significant potential to become a regional superpower. Gaddafi's strategic vision for a united Africa and his emphasis on economic reforms could have leveraged Libya's substantial oil wealth to propel the country forward. His efforts to strengthen the African Union and promote Pan-Africanism laid the groundwork for Libya to exert substantial influence across the continent. Please like the video, 
comment and subscribe to Africa Fast for more videos on African politics and economy. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.